What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the float layout with Kibi and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the float layout. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas. And in this video, we're going to look at the float layout with Kibi. So you see, I've got five buttons and I've got them floated top left, top right, center, bottom left, and bottom right. And we're going to use the float layout to do this. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I've got a couple of files here float underscore layout dot Kibi and float underscore layout dot py. Uh, these are the same files we've been working on up until now. The only difference is I changed this to reference float layout too, obviously. And uh, I put the color as white. We did that in the last video, so I'm just going to leave that. So uh, we're not going to use the float layout in this file, right? But if we were, we would have to import it. So we would go from float layout. We want to import float layout. And you'll notice the F and the L are capitalized here. Now, if we were going to call a float layout down here, like we did way back at the beginning of the course, we would need to do this. Now, we're not going to do that, so we don't need to do that. So I'll comment this out. I just wanted to show you if you were going to use it in this file, you would need to import it. But like I said, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use our Kivi layout or our Kivi design file here. So this is the same Kivi design file we had in the last video when we looked at images. So you can see we have images here. So let me just take that off. We don't need that. We don't need a orientation vertical. And instead of a box layout here, obviously we're going to use a float layout, right? So before we get into this, I'm going to create a, bu a bunch of buttons here so we can uncomment this. And instead of doing this for each button, let's just come up here like we learned earlier and create a button tag. Now inside of here, we can say our font underscore size for every one of these. Let's put this at 32. And we also need to say the size hint for each of these. And so I'm going to create a tuple here and I'm just going to make this 0 0.3 by 0 0.3. So this is width, width of our buttons and height of our buttons relative to the layout itself, to our app itself. So we were saying, hey, let's make these buttons 30 percent, you know, of the, the width and the height of our app. Right. So this will do this for every single one of our buttons down here that we designate. And we've looked at this in past videos. So now I'm going to take this and let's go top left. And let me just paste in four more of these two, three, four. And this one's going to be center. This will be top right. And we'll make this one bottom left and this one bottom right. Okay, so we've got five buttons here. This one, this one will say top left. This one will say top right. So top left, top right. This one will be in the center. This one will be bottom left, and this one will be bottom right. So if we go ahead and save this and run it just to see what this is going to be, and then head back over here and run Python float layout.py, we get an error. We got to come back over here to our main file. This is not. This should not be float layout two. This should be float layout. So all right, go ahead and save this. Add back over here. Let's run this guy again. And when we do, we see one button and it says bottom right. Now, actually, if we pull this up, you see bottom right is just the last one listed. These are all actually sitting there, but they're just kind of piled on top of each other. And then the last one standing is the one we see on top, right? So that's no good. We need to change the position of each of these buttons. And to do this, we use position underscore hint. And this is a dictionary. Now, this can have like six different options here. We can have, uh, let me just go X, Y, top, bottom, and left and right, right? So these are the things we can choose from X, Y, top, bottom, left, right. And X, Y are the X and Y coordinates of the coordinate plane of our app, right? So X is left to right, Y is up and down. So I don't know how to remember that except for just remember X is left and right and Y is up and down. Uh, top and bottom, left and right are kind of self obvious. Now, 
these are dictionaries and they can each take uh, a value of between zero and one. And think of that as a percentage. So one is 100%, zero is zero percent. And the decimal numbers between zero and one are the sort of value of X and Y we wanna give. So for instance here, if we want top left, we could give this, and we could do this several different ways. We can use any combination of these or you know, just one of them. We don't have to use them all. So we could say, hey, let's, let's put the X at zero. And then we can also say, but from the top, go up 100%. So if we save this and run it, we now have top left over zero. You see it hasn't, this right up here, this top left corner of our button, it hasn't gone left or it hasn't gone right any. It's zero in the XY coordinate, but it's 100% up at the top. Now it puts the top of it at one, not the bottom. So it puts this at one and then the button flows down from there. So, okay, we've got our top button. Now let's do this one over here. So think about this, what would we want here? Well, we would want this to go again up all the way, but they would, we would want this to go over almost 100%. But remember, when we do X, it's grabbing this point right here. So we don't want this point of the button, the top left point, to go over 100 because then the button would be off the screen. So we want the button to only go over X percent so that the rest of the button will still be there. Well, how big is our button? Remember, when we define these things up here, we said the button is 30%. So we need to go over 70% so the 30% of the button will be visible. Does that make sense? So let's come down here. This is the top right. So let me just copy this whole thing. Paste this in. We still want the top to be one because we want it to go all the way up. We want this X to only be 0.7, right? Because if we go over 0.7, that means there's 0.3 left for the button itself to sit there. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that looked okay. Okay, so we've got our top left and our top right, and that's pretty good. So now let's do the center. Well, let's do the bottom. And we notice the bottom left is already in the bottom left position. So if we wanted to, we could sort of give this an explicit X of zero right, and then just leave the rest of this off. But we don't really need to because it's already there, but I'll go ahead and put it there just for fun. But for the bottom right, what do we wanna do here? Well, we still wanna go over 0.7, just like we did for the top right, but we don't want it to go up to 100, and, uh, you know, to the top of one. Instead, we wanna do the bottom of one. And this is sort of just like the opposite of top, right? We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom one. So if we save this and run it, We see now we've got bottom right and bottom left, top right, top left. Now the only thing left is our center button. So we can come over to our center. And what do we wanna do here? Let's give this an X. We want it to go over like, I don't know, 35%. And let's give this one for just something different. Let's go Y and we'll do the same thing, 0 0.35. And we can do a zero there too. So go ahead and save this and run it. We see now we've got our center button in the center. And what this is doing is it's going over 0.35-ish percent, right? And then it's going for Y, it's going up 0.35%. And then there's our button. And uh, pretty simple. Now, you know, like I said, you could play around with these things. We don't necessarily always need to use the same things. Like for instance, here we used Y of 0.35. We could give this a top of like what? Point would this be, we don't want to go up to 100, we want to go up like 0.66 or something, because the button itself is 0.3, or what, 0.7 maybe, something like that. I don't know, save this and run it, see what this looks like. Uh, almost the same, it's up a little bit higher than we would want it to be. So maybe 0.66 was right. That a try. And that's sort of more in the center. So now we're doing like third, 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 basically. So, you know, you can use different ones of these. You can mix and match. You can use X, you can use Y, you can use top, bottom, left, right, whichever you want 
for your app to make sense, to get things positioned to wherever you want. And the point of this is that we can position these things wherever we want. And that's what the float layout is good for. You can move things around very specifically using your position hints and also your uh, size hints. These two both go together. So for instance, if we take this one off, this whole thing's gonna be messed up, right? So we can, we can run this guy again, and now it's just one big button, right? And you can see like things are, some, something weird's going on here, right? So you have to always remember to use both your size hint and your position hint for this when you're using a float layout. And when you do that, boom, boom, you can move these things with pretty exacting uh, measurements anywhere you want. And of course, the nice thing is as we resize this, right, they kind of keep their percentages of, you know, where they're at. So pretty cool and pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.